Andrew, what do you got? White, male, late 30s, early 40s. Looks like there was a bit of a struggle and he was hit with a piece of scaffolding or something. Either that or the fall killed him. And it's a pretty brutal attack. Who discovered the body? Security guard found it just after seven. Have you found a murder weapon yet, sir? Not yet, we're searching. Any ID? Wallet and driving licence. Clive Vardy, chartered accountant, 20 Askill Road. Wasn't short of a bobby too. Doesn't look like a mugging. His mother contacted us last night and reported him missing. So he lived at home? By the sound of it. And how long had he been missing? A couple of hours. Well, apparently it was a routine between them. Vardy rang home every evening before he left work, to stop his mother from worrying. Except last night he never called. Ah, uh, Mrs. Vardy, we believe that your son Clive was found dead just after seven this morning. I don't think I... You're sure that it is Clive? We found some ID in his pockets. We will need you to make a formal identification. We believe he was attacked. Would you like a cup of tea? I'll do that. No, there's no need. I'm quite all right. Sorry, I just... Sorry. Well, I just can't take it in. Sit down, Mrs. Vardy. Oh. <laughs> Dear? Uh, yes, Gov. We're still with her. I just told her. Jim's making her a cup of tea now. It was just you and Clive who were living here. Since his father went, ten years ago. Had Clive ever been married? Oh, no. Nothing like that. What about girlfriends? No. Well, what about friends? Someone he went drinking with? No, I don't think so. And what did he do in his spare time? We used to do things together. Sometimes we went to concerts, occasionally the theatre. And what about last night? Had you arranged anything? Oh, no. Recently he's been working late, one night a week. Always Wednesdays. So really the only time that Clive ever went out was either to work or out with you. It probably sounds very old-fashioned to you, Mr. Beach, but I don't think either of us ever really like to get too involved with other people. Castle, oh, I'm sorry to get out of Mrs. Vardy's. You've got to feel sorry for a gym. Sounds like he was all she had. Yeah. It was a strange setup. He must have been pretty weird himself. <laughs> Good morning. I'm DS Beach, this is DC Carver Sun Hill. And you're Miss... Diane Nash. I'm Mr Vardy's office manager. I'm afraid we have some bad news about Mr Vardy. What sort of news? He was found dead just after seven o'clock this morning. What happened? Was it an accident? We're treating it as a suspicious death. It's, it's just such a terrible shock, that's all. Look, I'm probably barking up completely the wrong tree, but... Go on. I've been terribly worried about Clive, that he was in some kind of trouble. What sort of trouble? Well, recently, Clive's cash withdrawals have been going through the roof. Every Wednesday, he got out £500. I tried to talk to him about it, but he always got very defensive with me, which really wasn't like him, because, well, we always had a very good relationship. Did you have any idea where this money was going? No. Well, I, I suppose with somebody else you'd always think of all the obvious vices. But not Clive, eh? No. Not Clive. Oh, Sarge! Have you got a minute? Sure. It's about the Vardy case. In here. I've got a stop slip from last night. There was a burglary in the Talwyn Road area, and B-team stopped Dennis Hepworth round the corner from the warehouse where the body was found. What time was that? 25 past 11. That's just after the time the FME reckoned that Vardy was killed. What did he say he was doing there? Well, he claimed he'd had a row with his girlfriend and was on his way round to her house to sort it out. They did a search, found nothing, but in view of what turned up this morning... 
I didn't know Hepworth had form for extortion. Yeah. I definitely think this is worth following up. Thanks, Donna. Morning, Dennis. We're investigating an incident that took place late last night. We'd like to check your whereabouts from 8 o'clock onwards. Already made a statement. We went to see a film with my girlfriend. Afterwards, we had a row. Split up. And what time was that? Must have been just before 11, just before the pub shop. And then what? And then I decided to go round to her place to make it up when your mate stopped me and tried to pin a burglary on me. And what's your girlfriend's name? Helen Naylor. She lives at 22 County Road. Yeah, I know the Naylor's. So what were you doing down in the industrial estate? On Tarwin Road. It's nowhere near the Naylor's place. I was just trying to clear my head before deciding to go round there. And what time do you go around your girlfriends? About quarter to twelve. And what time do you leave? Two. Two thirty. Helen's a cut above your usual old schlap, isn't she? Hi. Well, I'm a lucky man. So, uh, how does Dave Naylor feel about you sniffing around his daughter then? No problem. He knows I respect Helen. Do you know someone called Clive Vardy, Dennis? No. She does. His body was found about 200 yards away from where you were stopped last night. Oh, right. So last night you tried to stitch me up for burglary, and then this morning you tried to pin a murder on me. Well, it is a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? That that's where you decided to take a walk last night, to clear your head. I, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm afraid that's all it was. A coincidence. So how do you know Hepworth's girlfriend? I was at school with her dad, Dave Naylor. I was a couple of years below him. But we used to hang around with the same crowd. He's a good bloke. He used to really look out for me. So what's he do then? He's got a big plant hire business out near Epping Way. Went through a bit of a bad patch a few years ago when his old woman walked out and left him and he was left to bring Helen up on his own. But he's doing all right now. Which is why it's such a shame to see Helen mixing with such scum like Edward. Hello, Uncle Don. Hi. Is, um... Uh, Dad's not in right now. Well, actually, it's you we'd like to have a word with, please. <laughs> yeah, you better come in then. Uncle Don, eh? Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, no, thanks, love. It'll only take a couple of minutes. All right. Look, could you tell us where you were last night? Yeah, I was out with my boyfriend. Who's he? He's called Dennis Hepworth. Where did he go? Sorry, but why are you asking me all these questions? Look, there's nothing to worry about, love. <laughs> we just need to check a few details, that's all. So, where did you go? We went to see a French film at the Colton. <laughs> that doesn't sound like Den's cup of tea. <laughs> He's dead ignorant like that. Kept wanting to know when the naked women were coming on. I thought that's what French films were all about. Yeah? Well, maybe I should take you next time. So, where did you go after the film? We went for a drink in some pub. And then Den got all paranoid and reckoned I was eyeing up this other bloke. So I told him he could get lost. And I went home. Was that the last time you saw Hepworth? Um, no. It came round to you about half eleven, quarter to twelve. All I love you, I love you, and I wouldn't get like that if I wasn't so scared of losing you. It's pathetic. And what time did he go? Um, about two, quarter past. That must be Dad now. Dad! Yeah? Uncle Don's come round. Oh! Hello, Don. All right. Hello, Dave. How's it going? Yeah. What's all this then? Uh, this is a colleague, Jim Carver. Hello. We've just popped round to check a few things with Helen, that's all. Yeah? Like what? Helen tells us that uh, Dennis Hepworth was round here last night. Yeah, he was. What's the problem? You were here then? Yeah, I was in all evening. Can you remember what time he arrived? Oh, I suppose it must have been getting on for midnight. No, it was definitely earlier. It was about quarter to, twenty-two, but not midnight. <laughs> that's what I said, sweetheart. That's what getting on for midnight's all about. <laughs> so what's that Dennis been up to? No. Just routine inquiries. Uh, just one thing, Helen. The name Clive Vardy doesn't mean anything, does it? Clive Vardy, the accountant. So you know him then? Yeah, he used to do my books till I gave him his marching orders. What was that? Wasn't happy with the service. When was the last time you saw him? About six months ago when I finished with him. Why? He was found battered to death this morning in a warehouse on the Canley Industrial Estate. When was he killed? Late last night. But look, okay, I'm not going to keep you two any longer. 
Thanks for your help, Helen. No problem. Bye. Yes, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. What's up? I think I just got a bit more than a bargain for. With what? Well, that was Diane Nash, Vardy's secretary on the phone. She's never heard of Dennis Hepworth. Right. But she does know something about Dave Naylor. Um, OK, I can take a hint. Be in the canteen. Apparently he came to the office about three weeks ago and practically had a stand-up fight with Vardy. Did she say what this row was about? No, Vardy didn't tell her. Don, I wonder if you think it might be worthwhile having another chat with Naylor. What for? Well, there's a row for a start. Look, let's get one thing straight here, Jim. There is no reason whatsoever to think that Naylor has anything to do with Vardy's murder, right? I'm not saying there is. Look, I just think it might be worthwhile having another chat with him to cover our own backs. Look, if it makes you feel any better, you go and have a chat with Naila. But I don't think there's any point in wasting his time or mine, OK? You got a problem? No, God, not at all. So who's this Dave Naila? Clive Vardy used to be his accountant. So what do you know about Dave Naila? He's got his own plant hire business. And? And I used to be at school with him. Look, if you've got a conflict of interest on this case, Don, Maybe we should get somebody else in to run the investigation. Look, Gov, the only reason that I didn't want to have a chat with Naylor was that I don't think we've got anything to go on. That's all. I hear that Dennis Hepworth was stopped in Talwin Road last night. Yeah. He claims he was on his way to see his girlfriend, Helen Naylor. I I'm sorry, sir. Uh, there's someone waiting for you in the front office, Dave Naylor and his daughter. Right. I'll serve you a visit. Dave. Look, uh, Helen's got a bit of an apology to make to you for wasting your time. Oh, yeah? Yeah, apparently she told you she was out with Hepworth last night. Helen? That's not true. I was at home with my dad all night. Right. I think we'd better have a chat, don't you? Alone, please, Dave. Jim? Will you stay here with Dave for a minute? Sarge. Thanks. Helen? So why did you lie to us, Helen? I was scared. Scared? Of who? Well, then, of course. <gasps> you scared of Hepworth? Sounds to me more like you had him wrapped round your little finger. Some of the time. Not always. So you didn't see him at all last night? Well, he came round about quarter to twelve. I didn't lie about that, but I didn't see him earlier. And whose idea was it that you came down here? Yours or your dad's? Well, my dad's. Right. Look, Helen. I'm going to be totally straight with you now. I'm getting a bit worried about your dad. Why? We just found out that he recently had a big row with Clive Vardy. But when we came round, he said he hadn't seen him for six months. So do you know what this row was about? Well, it might have been about me. In what way? Clive asked me out. I told him I weren't interested, but it just wouldn't take no for an answer. And you think your dad might have gone round to sort it out with Clive? Maybe. Oh, well done then. Dave, can we have a chat? Well, <laughs> it'll only take a minute, and the sooner we get it sorted, the sooner you two can get out of here, okay? Yeah, all right. Jim. Oh, sorry. I thought you still wanted me to wait out here. Dave. So, Helen was at home with you last night? That's right. Not out with Hepworth? No. But it was your idea that she should come down here, not Helen's? Yeah. If Hepworth's done something, there's no point in her being dragged down with him, is there? Apparently, you were in Vardy's office three weeks ago. Oh, y yeah. As a tax cock-up. I'd completely forgotten. Are you sure that's all it was about? Yeah. I had to pay a penalty. Why should I pay for his mistakes? It didn't have anything to do with Helen, did it? Come on. What's Helen got to do with it? We hear that Vardy asked her out a few times. Yeah? Well, I don't get involved in that part of Helen's life. Look, I'm sorry if you don't believe me, but the only other person who could tell you what the row is about is dead. So, anything else you need to know, you know where to find me. So you're just going to let him go, then? What do you want me to do, Jim? Nick him for having a row with his ex-accountant? Look, I've been a good boy. 
I've had a talk with Naylor. He's told me what the row was about. And you're happy with his story, are you? Look, even if I wasn't, there's not a lot I could do about it now, is there? Come on, let's get help with. What are you trying to prove here, Beach? I was with Helen last night, I told you. We went to a film, we had a drink. And then you had a row. Aye, that's exactly what happened. Have you asked Helen? Look, as far as we're aware, Dennis, she only agreed to stand by your story because she's scared of you. <sighs> Helen was at home with her dad last night. What? What was she lying for? Mr. Hepworth stood up. But this was all our dad's idea. Did he bring her up to this? Sit down, Dennis. Sit down. Mr. Hepworth has sat down. Right. Why'd you say that? Well, he's trying to set me up, isn't he? Why would he want to do that? To get me off the scene. No, but I'll tell you this, right? Ellen was with me last night, no her dad. Sarge, what if Naylor is trying to set Hepworth up? How do you mean? Look, what if Naylor got mad over Vardy coming on to Helen and he lost his head? And because Hepworth was in Torwin Road last night, Naylor's trying to stick it on him. Jim, why would Dave Naylor, with a successful plant hire business, want to extort £500 a week from his ex-accountant, eh? Sarge, this may not be my place, but perhaps the DCI has a point about the conflict of interests. Yeah, you're right, Jim. It's not your place. Sarge, um, I've had a Mrs Vardy on the phone. She says it's urgent. Can you get round there straight away? All right, thanks, Jim. I found it in Clive's wardrobe. It's a recording of a conversation. Involving Clive? Anyone else? A woman. Did you recognise the voice? No. It's all there. Five hundred. It better be. You know why I'm doing this, don't you? You know that I want to see that you really love me. If I think you don't, I'll just have to tell the police what you've been doing. Yes, I know. Please don't do that. I don't want to, but it depends. Do you want to see? Yes. Remember, don't touch. Now, next week. 500 more. I never stopped Clive from having girlfriends, you know. He always said he wasn't interested. My little tart was blackmailing him, wasn't she? Do you know the woman? Girl. Yeah, we do. She's out. So when will she be back? I haven't got a clue. Dave, was Helen having a relationship with Vardy? Of course not. Only we've just turned up some evidence which suggests they knew each other pretty well. Oh, yeah? Yeah. A taped conversation between them. And he ain't talking about the weather. Oh. Which proves to me just what a sick and twisted bastard Clive Vardy really was. Now, look. He met Helen once. Once, right? At my New Year's party. And he became obsessed. He started sending her little presents. Boxes of underwear with notes saying, I hope these fit. So, your row with Vardy was about Helen, right? Yeah, it was. Look, Don, can I have a word with you on your own, eh? I'm oh, sorry, mate. Under the circumstances... Can I, I have a word, anyway. yes or no? Please. Thanks. Done. No matter what it was done or hasn't done, I want Helen kept right out of this. No matter what it takes. Did Helen go out with Hepworth last night, Dave? Yes, yeah, she did. But you made her go down to the station and withdraw her statement, right? What else could I do? You as good as told me that Hepworth was in the frame of Vardy's murder. Is Helen involved? She told me that Hepworth got nasty with her once about Vardy. He accused her of encouraging him. Look, Don, is there any way you can keep her out of it? Sorry, mate. It's out of my hands. What is this? You're scared of losing your pension? Listen, my governor wanted me off this case. But I thought at least if I was involved, there'd be a chance of keeping you two out of it. I've done my best. Well, I'm afraid that's just not good enough. 
I'm your mate, Don. I thought that meant something. Guess what I've just found out back. So she's been there the entire afternoon. Helen Naylor. I'm arresting you on suspicion of blackmail. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention my question. Blackmail of who? Something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Ask your question. Blackmail of who? Clive Vardy. It's all on the tape. Helen. He asked me out, and when I said no, it kept buying me presents. Go on. Well, it was like pervy, you know, following me round all the time. So anyway, I asked him how much the presents had set him back, and he said he'd spent five grand. So I said he was lying. And then he got all slimy and said he was going to tell me a secret. What was that? That he'd been fiddling clients' money to buy me presents. To prove that there wasn't anything he wouldn't do for me. So I said, OK, I won't tell anyone, but you've got to start paying me. And I just said £500 a week just to see if he'd do it, that's all. I can give it back. I've only spent about £200. I've still got most of it. Why did you do it? I don't know. Because I've had this image of me. He called me Princess. He tried to make out I was something different. He said I was pure, untouched, you know. And then when I started seeing Den, he said I'd made myself cheap and dirty. Then he said I'd destroyed his life, and now he was going to destroy mine. So he did threaten to turn you in, or tell your dad? Is that when you and your boyfriend decided to get rid of him? No. Den didn't know about the blackmail. I just wanted him to scare Clive off. I couldn't tell him about the blackmail, though, could I? So? So I said Clive would rape me. Oh, Den just went mad. He said nobody did that to his woman and got away with it. Oh, I didn't mean this to happen, honestly, Uncle Tom. Clive said that Den had got it all wrong. That he'd never do anything to hurt me. He said he loved me. And that's when Den just lost his rack. That's when Den killed him. Dave? What's happening with Helen? We're going to be charging her. What with? Blackmail and being an accessory to murder. Look, she asked if you'd bring her a change of clothing in because she'll be staying in custody. Can I see her? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Come on. Kevin? You could have done something for her if you really wanted to, Don. She's all I've got. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, mate. So am I. 